welcome to the latest episode of 90 from the 90s, a series where Paul and I pick a favourite album of ours from the 1990s with the rules that it must be a new studio album released in that decade and that we are only allowed to choose one album from each artist. So Paul, what selection are you going with today? So today I'm going with 1992 album Angel Dust by Faith No More. It's just really quite a good mixture of different styles and I suppose I'd heard like singles from the previous album uh, but this this was like the first one I'd really bought and it was just very much of its time and there's just something good about that and uh, hearing the first single Midlife Crisis that, that was like the single before the album came out it was just it was a good mixture of like using synthesizers with heavy rock at the time I thought it was quite good and I really like uh, Mike Patton's voice I think it's a really good voice just yeah just the, the different musical styles and but there was also a lot of melody as well you could see they're influenced by stuff from the 60s yeah it was almost like their commercial breakthrough although you could argue maybe the previous album but for me this was like their big breakthrough really to the mainstream i like the heavy songs on it as well and quite a cool cover as well um faith no more and that album is mm. very unique sounding and mm-hmm. obviously probably most famous for the song epic from the previous album mm-hmm. the real thing um and this is is, is quite a different album to that uh, yeah, I agree. I think it's a great album. Not listened to it in ages. I must, mm-hmm. I must do so. Uh, but yeah, I think the from from the songs that were on that album, I think "Midlife Crisis" was the most famous until uh, they released their cover version of "Easy," which was a song they used to play in concert. And I know because I seen them on that tour uh, at the Glasgow Barrowlands, um, and the also the when they head. supported Guns N' Roses. Like its head, so yeah, mm-hmm. we, we, I see, we also we've seen them there as well. So I've seen them twice on that tour, and yeah, they used to do easy, and then ended up releasing it as a single, and it uh, was a number one hit here. And I think they then put it onto the expanded edition of the of the album. Um, but so yeah, they, they used yeah. to do covers, things like uh, the Bee Gees. Mm-hmm. I started a joke. That's excellent. Their cover, it's really good. Oh, I started a joke. It's a really good cover. When they used to do Midlife Crisis, I think they used to incorporate the Prince song, My Name is Prince, into it <laughs> as well. So, they were good. They were good band. Sticking with uh, Hard Rock, and I'm going to pick uh, an absolute classic album from 1994, and that is mm. Soundgarden Super Unknown, which I bought on on CD, um, I think the week it came out then, and what I like about it, um, it kind of took what they were doing previously and, and just maybe fine-tuned it, and in a lot of ways it was perhaps a bit more commercial sounding for the masses, and as part of that they had probably their signature hit song from it, which was Black Hole Sun, which is brilliant, however mm-hmm. that is just the tip of the iceberg. If you actually go through the songs in the album, I think if I remember correctly, there's maybe 16 songs on it. And the the, the great thing about it is there's, there's a lot of variety of musical styles on there. Yeah, you've got the hard rock, but you've also got um, ballads on there. You've got Eastern influenced uh, style music. Um, you've got maybe more uh, lo-fi type uh, songs on there so yeah it's there's not a bad song on it and fantastically produced and the band just sound you know so powerful on the records um, so yeah very easily gets into uh, being one of my favourites from the 1990s one of the 90s greatest albums and I would say one of the greatest rock mm-hmm. albums of, of all time and Spoonman Superb that was the first mm-hmm. single from the album yeah, it's, it's good. I remember when you, you got it, and I remember even before Black Hole Sun was released as a single, I remember liking it just because it sounded really out there. I, I really liked the sound of it. And then it became a single. And because the other 
I like Jesus Christ Pose from the previous album and I really like that song so I hadn't really heard any of anything from them but it's interesting around this time since grunge they all get their hair cut as well <laughs> from the previous album uh, but, and Chris Cornell's I probably didn't really appreciate it till much later but he's got one of the best voices in rock fabulous mm. singer um, mm. Yeah, fabulous singer, and and actually the the entire band, great musicians. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, Matt Cameron on drums, who then went on to join uh, Pearl Jam and, and another guy. So yeah, no, very talented uh, group of musicians. Was that the, their last album? I'm I'm trying to think. That... No, they released another one a couple of years later, maybe '97, called Down on the Upside. Right. Uh, I, think, I think the first single from that was Pretty Noose. However, I think after they pretty much disbanded, mm. and I think most notably Chris Cornell went on to um, form um, Audio Slave. Audio Slave. Mm. Uh, but but Soundgarden did get back together. They had recorded, I think, one or two um, additional albums and had toured. And I think actually when Chris Cornell had died, Soundgarden were on a tour. Um, and I'm sure he died before or after a show uh, on that tour mm. in the US. Mm. But yeah, I mean, their, their, their heyday in terms of creativity and popularity was definitely, you know, the first half of the 90s, that's for sure. Thank you for watching this latest edition of 90 from the 90s. Come back next week for another episode. Until then, keep trimming. Mm.